Hi everybody, today's video will be just a small overview on the upcoming full build of the Stuart models beam engine. I'm only going to go over a few small things today just to show you basically what you get in the kit. So I have bits and pieces and what I do to prepare for the build. It takes quite a bit of preparation before you get into these builds but I'm sure you guys know that already. I'll start off by showing you the contents of the kits and the quality of the castings. So bear with me and we'll get to it. The first casting is the base. Um, as you can see it's quite a large piece of metal and it's cast actually very well. Very few imperfections. Uh, I'm very pleased with this piece. I'll just show you a little bit at the top. The bosses at the end. Sorry about the camera. It's swapping it around. You can see the bosses, they're quite quite well done. The overall finish on the casting is very good, as you can see. I'm very pleased. Next we have the flywheel again. Very well cast. Obviously there's clean up to be done. Prior to machining, we'll just clean up these surfaces before putting it in the lathe but it should come up quite well the next piece I'm not so happy with it's the cylinder if you have a look it has quite a lot of flash in fact it's going to take a lot of work to get this one right not um, very happy at all with this piece but we'll give it a go I was going to ring Stuart models and talk to them about it but I thought I'll give it a go and see what happens and you know go from there basically it may, may machine up okay but this will be the first piece I actually do for the build um, so in the next video you'll see me clean this up and attempt to uh, machine it to specifications. I've already measured it and it's there isn't a lot of uh, metal, excess metal on these castings so that's my biggest fear that I, I won't be able to clean it up properly but anyhow we'll see what happens. Next I'll show you some of the smaller parts um, that are in the build these are some of the um, smaller parts. Obviously, you can see the beam here. Just metal bar, metal stock. Some phosphorus bronze items here, or gun metal, I should say. A container of screws. I don't know if you can see that. All this is wrapped in sort of a plastic wrap on cardboard. This is how these kits come. They're they're actually not the parts are not floating around loose. Um, I've taken the other parts off the, the cardboard so I could show you in a bit more detail. We have here the pedestal, which again looks to be a pretty good casting. Uh, I, again, I haven't got it out of the plastic. The pulley. Again, pretty good. supports, the valve chest, and so bits and pieces. This casting quality is fairly good on these, so I'm only just disappointed with that one item. Okay, this is the instructions you get with the kit. Very basic stuff as far as 
instructions go, I won't go over it, but it's basically just tells you how to put the engine together once machined. It gives you a overview of all the parts and where they go. And on the back there is a parts listing for the different bits and pieces. If we open it out is the full drawing of the engine itself. Quite well done. I've checked a few measurements, I've found a few little hiccups here and there, things that don't add up, but nothing that it can't be you know, sort of worked out, nothing too, too difficult. This is, this is obviously the cylinder and this will be the first job we'll be doing. But before we do that, I just want to show you something that I like to do before I do any builds. Before I do any builds, I like to make a photocopy of each section. So this is number one, which is obviously the cylinder. I photocopy the, that section, I write notes and things on it, um, tapping sizes for different holes. I also put down the decimal sizes of things. I don't like working in, in uh, fractions. I think that's just a silly idea when you're doing engineering type stuff. You know, um, you need to set your DROs and things on your on your machinery, and they don't have fractions. No, no one uses fractions, so I convert all my fractions to decimal. Just write them on a piece of paper, a photocopy piece of paper. Save so scribble and all of your plans, and keep them all nice and neat. And also, you just co concentrate on the section you're doing at the time. Another thing I like to do is I just have a chart handy. I do have an engineering book with all this stuff in it, but I find I just photocopy some charts and just have them sitting near the lathe or near my plans at the time. Like a quick reference guide, you know, this one has fractions, decimals and millimetres. So if I, if I want to use millimetres on the, well the, the lathe is actually millimetres, so it's the milling machine. So if I don't want to use the DRO and just use the slides, the dials on the slides, I could just use millimetres. Um, they're just a get these off the internet, Google, and you'll get heaps of stuff like this. The other thing I like to have is I have one. This is a, a BA tapping chart. Um, I just write down some of the metric equivalent drills that you can use. Um, you'll notice here that this column here has the tap drill in millimetres and I've just rounded them up down here but I do have the correct tapping drills in, um, in stock so it won't be a problem. This will be the next build this will be the base, sorry it's, it's quite a large plan and I have to get it away again you can see that I've handwritten the decimal equivalents on here and the drill sizes. Um, I find it saves you scribbling all over pieces of paper at the time. It's handy. You've done it. You sit down at your leisure and work it all out and you don't have a problem. Now, I want to go over just a quick overview of the workshop with you guys. Just a very quick one. Um, I'm not going to do any machining today, but I just want to show you a quick overview of the workshop so to keep this video fairly brief and next time we'll get into more detail as we machine each part uh, starting with the cylinder. So till next time, 
uh, have a great day. Bye. Right guys, this is my very cluttered workbench. I hope you understand the mess, but you guys would probably understand when we're doing stuff like this, it always gets messy. This is one of my works in progress restoration of a Wilesco D29, I think it is. D24, I'm not sure. Um, someone will tell me anyhow. Okay, that's my scroll saw, which I cut out most of my brass plates on. I uh, use it quite often. It's one of the best tools in the workshop. Moving along, a little bit of bench space. My grinder, finisher. Also an invaluable tool. Uh, I actually couldn't do without that also. Just a couple of small items that I feel a workshop needs. Okay, this is my lathe, an Optimum 256V. It was originally a 1200 watt DC motor driven lathe, but I've now put it on steroids and it is now driven by a 2 horsepower 3 phase. AC motor which is driven by a phase converter I haven't got it on because it screams a little bit and I wouldn't be able to talk over the top of it over here we have the DRO set up on both axes uh, I currently work in Imperial measurements, thousands of an inch, being old school, I find that easier to handle. The lathe has both a three jaw, four jaw chuck, of course, and all the regular bits and pieces. It's a 550 millimeter lathe between centers. And um, I'll just show you, go around the back, it's a bit hard to see here. But that is the beast that drives it. So quite a large motor. Took quite a bit of fitting. But at least now it has enough power to do what I want. This is my milling machine, which you can clearly see is again an optimum. BF20L, the L stands for long bed. We come down, it's only a small, fairly small milling machine, but it does have a very long bed, and on the bed I can fit a rotary table, milling, milling vice, and it's also been fitted with a power feed. To make it look life a bit easier when doing long cuts. It's not a bad machine, but it could be a bit heavier duty. It sits on its own base. It's done quite a bit of work, and I'm very happy with it. This is my Ryobi bench drill. It's quite new and I don't use it very often. I find I use the milling machine more. It's um, not as accurate as I'd like. A lot of table movement. Uh, it's good for general drilling and heavier stuff. Basically, um, mild steel and angle, things like that. But it is what it is. Okay, moving along, everybody. That's it folks for today. I hope you enjoyed the description of the parts from the box and the overview of the workshop. Um, it's only a very small overview. I didn't show you files and drills and machine tools and stuff like that. Otherwise we'd be there for an hour. But um, I will see you in the next video which will hopefully be out next week uh, with the commencement of the 
cylinder assembly. Thank you. Have a great day.